So let's abuse our first vulnerability and use it to explore the machine and get root. We're going to start with the first port that we saw open, and that is TCP port number 21. And the service running behind it is an FTP service, particularly it's called VSFTPD. Like I said, your job as an ethical hacker or as a penetration tester is to investigate each and every single one of these ports and services running behind them. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to connect to this port and see what information I can get out of it. I'm going to switch to my command line. And as you can see here, I have Metasploit running in the background and ready already. Let me go to another one. And because it's an FTP service, I'm going to try and connect to it using my FTP client. To do that, I run FTP and the IP address. And it looks like on the most recent version of Kali, we don't have an FTP client. However, we've already learned how we can manage packages, install and uninstall software on our Kali Linux. We do that using the apt get command. So I'm going to do apt get install. No, not sin. I don't know what sin I'm thinking about. Install FTP. And Kali will go and fetch the FTP client and install it for me. It will take a minute, so let's wait for it together. And once it's done, we can try again and connect to our target machine. Now that my FTP client is installed, I can try to connect to it using the FTP command. And I do FTP the IP address. The first thing that I'd like you to notice here is the version of the FTP server returned. The name and the version actually. So the name is VSFTPD and the version is 2.3.4. And I'm getting prompted to log in using a username. There are instances when an FTP server is configured to accept anonymous logins. And with that, I mean the FTP is configured to take or accept a username of anonymous and any password. So I'm going to try and see if that works here. I'm going to type the username anonymous and any password. And yeah, it worked. I am logged in now. Now that I'm logged in, I want to see if I can find any information or any files lying around, any directories lying around that I can pull out and use to my advantage. If you've never used FTP before and you don't know what commands you can run, type a question mark and we'll show you a list of commands that you can use. You notice that some of these commands we've already seen. For example, the ls command, like we've seen in Kali Linux, is a command that we can use to list the contents of a directory. Mm, and it looks like there's nothing here. So it looks like I'm a bit unlucky. I couldn't find anything useful. To terminate the connection with the FTP server, I'm going to type by. Let me go back to the Zenmap scan. Now that I've investigated the service from a higher level, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into that particular FTP service and the particular version of that FTP service. So I'm going to copy that and go and try to research it a little bit and see if there are any vulnerabilities affecting it. And the second I type that into Google, you'll see that multiple suggestions pop up on how to exploit this service. So it looks like we're in luck and there might actually be an exploit that we can use to break into our target system. I'm going to look at the first result here, which is an entry by Rapid7. This is the company behind Metasploit, the company that created Metasploit. And it looks like we're actually very lucky from the first service that we're investigating. There exists a vulnerability that we can use to break into our target system. And this is the name of the module in Metasploit that we can use. So I'm just going to copy this and go back to my Metasploit. We've seen how to use Metasploit before, so I'm not going to go through the details of it. I'm just going to go ahead and use the module. The info, if you remember, shows me a little bit more information. I'm just going to type this to verify that this is actually the module that I want to use. And as you can see here, this targets exactly the version that I have. So all that is left now is to configure my exploit and run it. To do that, let me have a look at the options by typing show options. All I need to do here is to just configure the remote host. Remote host, as we've seen in the beginner's video, is my target IP address. So I'll do set our host to the IP address. 
And in Metasploit, there are certain exploits that we can check whether they're going to be successful or not before we actually run them. So before we execute and run the exploit and risk breaking a service or risk the exploit not succeeding, we can try to check to see what the probability of our exploit succeeding is. Now this option exists, but not in every exploit. So let me see if this exists here. I'm going to run the check command. And unfortunately it says that for this particular module, check is not supported. So all I'm left with is to run the exploit. And I can do that in one of two ways. Either I type run or I type exploit. So I'll type exploit and hit enter and let Metasploit do its magic. Once you start seeing these plus signs in green, this is when you start getting excited because that means the exploit is actually working. And here we go, we have a command shell session one open, which means we now have a command shell open. I'm going to type ID and look at that. We actually got in as root, which is fantastic. And again, I'm going to double check that and type who am I, which is another command that we've seen. And it tells me that we're root. And we ended up landing in the root directory. Now to terminate my session, all I have to do is type exit. And Metasploit closes the command shell. And I hit enter again to go back to my Metasploit command prompt. So we got lucky. We managed to break in targeting the first service. However, I'm going to assume now that we're not as lucky which is more of a realistic scenario. It's very rare that you will manage to get root from the first service that you target on the first IP address that you target. This almost never happens. So to make things a little bit more realistic and a little bit more challenging, I'm going now to assume that this service is no longer vulnerable and we're going to move on together to look at other services and see how we can exploit those. But before we do that, here's your mission for this section. When we logged in as an anonymous user, we did not find anything on that FTP server. So what I'd like you to do for this mission is to log in using the default credentials that are provided, which are the MSF admin user and MSF admin password. And see what you can get. See if there's anything useful that you can find. If you find anything on the FTP server, figure out a way to download these files and directories to your Kali machine. So not only list them, but actually download them. Once you're done with this FTP server on port 21, there's another FTP server running on another port. Do the same thing. Try to connect to that FTP server. And again, try anonymous user. If that does not work, try the MSF admin user. And once you're logged in, if you actually manage to log in, see if there are any files or folders that you might find useful and figure out a way to download those as well. Once you're done, let's move on to the next video.